Hello everyone and welcome back to another video and welcome if you are new. Now this is going to be a slightly different video, me just talking to you guys about the bike and what I plan to do with it in the future basically. I've had a few questions kind of about the bike, about you should do this or you shouldn't do this or why haven't you done this and it's kind of like yeah yeah I'm going to get to that, just, just hang on, um, especially regarding the wheel and the front end. So yeah, completely non-scripted, just got a sheet with a few bullet points, not that I script my videos anyway, only when I'm doing voiceover, but anyway. Uh, got the bike behind me in the background, as you can see. Uh, nowhere near done yet, unfortunately. Probably not until, I don't know, at least the summer, um, till it's going to be kind of roadworthy. But anyway, first thing I'm going to be doing is getting some new forks. Now, these are going to be the DNM USD 8 forks. I'll put a picture up on the screen. And these are just like a brilliant all rounder for e bikes. I've seen other people use them. Um, the other one I've seen some people use are like Rock Shocks and sure, go for it. Um, they're obviously high quality downhill mountain bike forks, but then so are these, and these have the advantage of being double crown, um, so you get that extra bit at the top and you can attach stuff like headlights and indicators and whatnot to it. I'll come to that in a minute. Um, but yeah, you just get loads of customizability. You've got like eight inches of tra travel. That's like that much. That's like ridiculous amount, so you can make it really kind of um, really soft because you've got so much travel, so it can really absorb... Um, all the bumps. Also, it's got um, space for dual discs on each side, um, so you can have dual calipers. I don't know if I'm going to go down that route because obviously it doubles the cost, it doubles the maintenance. You've got to get like a special T section to run both calipers, but we'll see. Um, it might help spread out the load. And also, if I'm using regen braking, I don't actually know how much I'll be using the front brakes, but this is all stuff I'm just going to have to see kind of as I start going along. Um, and then it's also got preload, rebound. Um, air chamber but it does ultimately run on springs not air um, which I find with air it's just more customizable you know you can just up the pressure down the pressure and you've got a completely different feel um, but yeah it's got so many customization options that you know it's worth it it's not cheap these forks are about 310 quid here in the UK um, depending on where you get them, there's a few variants. Um, I've found the cheapest one, weirdly, is actually from Australia. Um, so that's probably the one I'll be getting. Um, but yeah, you can get it in white or black. Black's a bit more expensive and you get gold on the white one. So yeah, I thought some gold stanchions might look pretty cool. Now for the rear suspension, at the moment, I've just got kind of like a bog standard uh, air shock. It was used, really good deal on eBay, about £40 posted. Um, but yeah, it's only got about, I think it's 38mm travel, which is not a lot. Um, and you notice that when you're going over bumps, it kind of, it bottoms out. Um, it's not great. It's got, you know, it's got some adjustment on it. But that's definitely something I want to replace. But probably in the future, because, you know, I've got a shock on there at the moment. But it's not great. So, um, the one I want to get is the um, DNM Burner. Gosh, I've got to read my sheet now. RCP2S. Um, it's made by um, the same company who make the Forks. Um, and yeah, it's a coil spring, but it's got dampeners, compression, rebound adjustment. Um, it looks pretty good. Not too silly money. It's about 120 quid or something, which as far as rear shots go, ain't too bad. Now, on the subject of kind of a front end, basically, um, the big one which I'm working on are the tyres and the rims. I've got some 18-inch rims, which are here. Um, and I've also got this hub in the middle, which is from a company called um, Vector. They are, I think they're a German company. And the thing about this is it's got room for those dual dismounts, um, disc brake mounts on each side. Um, so if I want to take advantage of that, then I can, which is obviously potentially useful to have that upgrade option. Um, in terms of, yes, yeah, so that's the hub. And then working on getting it all laced up with the spokes and everything. Obviously, I've got to get custom spokes because got to get them the right length down to pretty much the nearest millimeter I think I'll be getting like 188 mil spokes um, I've done some calculations ordered some test samples that's what's um on here at the moment these ones um, yeah there's a great company in Bournemouth called I think it's like custom spokes so yeah, getting them to do it they're yeah brilliant great quality and the other thing is the tires now when I get around to it I'm gonna be running inner tubes I don't think I'm gonna run tubeless certainly not yet anyway it's a bit of a faff just to get it all set up and might be worth it one day I don't know um, so yeah you've got to pick what tires you can get like 
off-road kind of knobbly tires, you can get slick tires, you can get tires with grooves, you can get all all weather tires, rain tires, there's the it's, it's lot basically. Um, I have no idea which one to go for, I've, I'll probably just go for like a budget option, I don't know. Because um, obviously this bike's not heavy in the grand scheme of things, I think it's about 55 kilos it will be when it's done. Um, which for a motorbike with 10 horsepower is absolutely nothing. I mean, the power to weight ratio on this, I think it's about 200 bhp per ton if you work it out, which is not crazy, but combined with 150 newton meters of torque, it's going to feel quick. Now, moving on to lighting and stuff, uh, ultimately I'll be getting headlight for this, as uh, well as indicators and tail light. Now, what I'll probably try and do is get headlight with the um, daytime running light ring around it, and can bolt that to the stanchions and that'll look pretty sweet can have it on while I'm going along increases visibility and just looks cool pretty much um, then also indicators front and back I've already got them left over from my old bike you might just be able to see them sticking on the end there um, and then tail light um, that'll be connected up to the brake switches so that obviously when you pull the brake red light comes on and when you aren't braking there'll just be like a dim light um, for that as well. Now, another big thing which is really going to make this bike kind of personal to me and what it is, is what I'm calling the function control unit. Now, it sounds a bit fancy, uh, but I'll try and explain it. It's basically going to be a series of custom PCBs controlled by an Arduino Due, Ju, however you pronounce it, um, to control things such as the lights, uh, monitor temperatures, drive a little LCD which will go on top of the BMS to show stats about any fault codes or how much power you're drawing, your average speed, all that kind of data, maximum lean angle, I can do whatever I want pretty much. Um, so yeah, I'm in the process of designing some custom PCBs, uh, which I'll probably get JLPCB to make. Um, so I've done the one for temperature which will take, as you remember if you watch my previous video, about doing the batteries, I installed two temperature sensors um, on each block. One was for the BMS, and the other one is going to be for this system so that the Arduino knows what's going on with the batteries, it can monitor the temperatures basically. And I'm also got it right here, got the BMS, um, and yeah, that is in shot, just checking. Um, been trying to figure out how I can connect via UART to that, and then I can pull data directly off the BMS rather than having to go through the app, which would be pretty cool. Um, but yeah, still working on that. And um, there's a few pieces of software, some people have done some Arduino code for that, so hopefully I can directly integrate that with the Arduino. Um, also, as I said, board for the switches, that's gonna be stuff like the handlebar switches, so the high beam, low beam, indicators, horn, um, stop start, all that stuff. I'll be connecting the stop start switch the BMS as well just to make it more like a real motorbike I guess oh yeah and the other one is a communication module which will be used to talk to the BMS the Sabaton um, and whatever else I want pretty much um, so yeah gonna try and make it as compact as possible because space is getting pretty tight on that bike um, haven't got much space left actually kind of in the um, main section because the BMS the wires the batteries so I might be able to squeeze it in there, I'm not sure, if not, it will have to go underneath. Now, a bit of a bombshell is that I actually have managed to blow up my Sabaton, which, yes, I know, it's really annoying. Um, basically, I was, uh, I'd taken apart my hub motor, as you saw in my last video, and I just connected up with some uh, jump leads, like some alligator clip wires, just to test it in the hope that if, I'd done something wrong that the alligator clip would melt before the sabaton and one of the leads I was using I, I don't know it must have been faulty it had a resistance of like 3k or something I measured it afterwards so I connected it all up um, ran the hall test it did the hall test fine but then when I went to do the throttle nothing um, and eventually it just died um, I took it apart and it's the microcontroller inside that's shorted um, and obviously, although you can buy the microcontroller online, it's going to be blank, it's not going to have the code on it. I've tried contacted, contacting the seller and obviously they don't want to give you a microcontroller um, if they even understood what I was going on about that is. Um, yeah, it's, 
I bought a second hand one to try and switch them over, but that one was broken as well. So, yeah, sometimes you just learn the hard way. Um, although there's a silver lining in that this Sabaton I bought didn't actually come with all the features I wanted. For example, the regen and throttle, that would be really nice to have because uh, then you can adjust the regen rather than just having it on or off when you pull the brake cleaver. Um, reverse, not that I really need it, but it could be handy to have. And also a motor temperature sensor. Uh, my Sabaton doesn't have the wire for that. My motor doesn't even have the compatibility, but that could be an upgrade in the future. So yeah, as I say, you learn the hard way sometimes. Um, so probably towards the end end of the build, um, I'll have to get another one of those, which, yeah, not taking it lightly, but I'm over it. It's happened. You make mistakes, so what? Um, yeah, it's annoying, but anyway, now to go with the Sabaton, um, the company who make the Sabaton controllers, QS Motor, who are now called like MQ Con or something, they also make a dashboard. I think it's like the CT22 model. Um, specifically designed for electric vehicles so it's got things like a battery gauge, um, speedo, no rev counter, um, things that you'd want on an electric vehicle and it's just like a nice kind of all-in-one package digital dials. Um, the only thing it doesn't have is like a power meter to show you how much current you're drawing but I can add that myself that's not a big problem. Um, waterproof, runs off the main battery, all good. Uh, so at some point I'll be getting one of those wiring up to the function control unit um, I've already managed to get some Arduino code working that can pull data off the Sabaton then display it on a screen. Um, so I know that's not going to be a problem. And that brings me on to my final point about registering the bike. Now with my old bike, I rode it around just as it is, no license plate, nothing like that. Um, and I was fine, didn't get caught, went past the police multiple times, it wasn't a problem. However with this, you're not passing that as a mountain bike and I just feel that um, in order to not have that feeling of kind of are they going to be around the next corner, am I going to get caught, um, I think I'm going to go ahead and when it's all done obviously go through the process of registering the bike, ideally it's a 125cc because then you don't have the 30 mile an hour speed limit although I think the registration um, process is slightly more complex for 125 so I have to look into that when I do it and obviously it's not cheap to register it and the big one is insurance because me young guy um, apparently we crash a lot um, so yeah I'll have to look into that but the flip side of that is that if you were to get caught bike confiscated points on your license license taken away maybe hundreds of pounds fine it's just not worth it and I know there are people out there who go around on these bikes and they don't get caught and they have a great time and that's fine, but yeah, I just, I think it would be best um, if I'd register it. And, you know, some people say, oh, it takes the fun out of it, it takes the freedom away, and yeah, I get that, but that's what I think I'm going to do, is go ahead and register it, similar to what Andy did with his. Um, he's really kind of paving the way um, to these kind of, I don't know what, not commercial bikes, but kind of DIYE bikes, and making them kind of a real, real proper thing. Um, so yeah, at some point get that registered, put that on the tail light, that will look sweet when that's got a number plate on it. And yeah, I, I can't wait to get the build done really and go whizzing around on it, hopefully, maybe in the summer. Um, and also I'd much rather do this kind of video riding around, um, it's more interesting for you guys rather than have me waffle on to a camera, but yeah, it, it's nowhere near ready yet, but yeah, it's getting there, it's getting there. So. Yeah, that's just an update really on what's what the plan is, what's happening. Um, obviously, there's some general stats on this bike. 8 kilowatts, 120 newton meters of torque, 40 amp hour battery. Um, yeah, those are the kind of... I'll put some stats on the description if you want to check it out. But yeah, so anyway, thanks for watching. Um, if that all sounds good to you, then please consider subscribing. Trying to get to a thousand. Um, also, hit the like button. If you've got any comments or suggestions, put them down below. And uh, yeah, look forward to seeing you in the next video. See ya.